My name is Mahfuz Rahman. I'm a plant pathology extension specialist. Uh, we are here at the WBU organic farm. Uh, behind me and in front of me, you can see sweet chard that um, has a disease called Sarcospora leaf spot. So Sarcospora leaf spot caused by a fungal pathogen, Sarcospora beticola, which is not only a major disease of sweet chard, but also table beet, spinach, and other members belonging to Chenopodiaceae. So in a hot and you know, humid summer when uh, you have very high humidity and uh, uh, leaf wetness is relatively long, this disease can be very, very damaging on all the crops I just mentioned. Uh, the disease identification is relatively simple. You will see numerous uh, spots or those have kind of pale brown and circular uh, centers and also they, their uh, margins will be kind of red. So over time, those spots will enlarge and merge together or mix, uh, you know, like they will come in contact with other lesions and then blight part of the leaf or the whole leaf. So, on this infected leaves or infected lesions over time, they will produce lots of conidia or spores. Those spores will splash with the rain uh, and then go on the new healthy leaves and then cause infection. So in the presence of leaf wetness hours that required, uh, they will cause infection and new leaves will keep get will be getting more and more infection that way uh, the older leaves normally get infection fast and then uh, still the younger leaves at the centers may remain healthy for a while like any other fungal diseases sarcospora leaf spot also required leaf wetness hours to germinate the spores and then cause the infection even though the daytime can be uh, relatively dry, but if, if at the night, only six or seven hours leaf wetness they get, those spores will germinate and then cause new infection, and then infection will keep spreading. In the infected tissues, they form a hard black structure called uh, sclerotia. Those sclerotia actually help the fungus overwintering, that means surviving from one season to another. These uh, fungal spores or fungal growth can also survive on the infected tissues uh, from one season to another, also on some other uh, ho weed host that belonging to Chenopodiaceae. In addition, the fungus can also survive on seeds. So, given that the situation with the disease uh, survival from one season to another, the control or management of the disease should include an integrated option. Buying certified seeds or disease-free seeds should be the number one priority. And number two will be to remove the infected. Here in this field, you will see lots of dead or highly infected leaves already on the ground. So that means the disease will survive on these infected plant debris from this season to the next season. So if you are growing any member of the Chenopodiaceae family in the same plot next year, obviously you will get the disease. So the next option is to remove all the infected plant debris from the ground. If you are not able to remove all these plant debris due to because the field is too big or it's not uh, too cumbersome to remove all these plant debris, another option will be to deflow this plant debris. So, once this plant debris get inside the soil, the other microbes will come in and then 
uh, quickly degrade that plant tissues or plant debris, the infected plant debris. So this fungal organism will be exposed in the soil and in the soil they will not survive too long. So before the next season, next growing season, they will all die. Otherwise, on the plant debris, they can survive. And uh, as I mentioned earlier that a lipoidness is a requirement for this fungus to infect new leaves and then spread the disease. So it is always a good option not to use overhead irrigation. If you do that, you have the option not to use it during the evening time, but use it during the daytime, uh, preferably during noon. So uh, leaves will uh, dry off uh, before the nightfall. So uh, all, these are all organic options and also some products you can use, those are organically approved, like different uh, fixed coffers, like uh, copper hydroxide, copper sulfate, copper oxychloride, they have different trade names. So, but, yeah, but any copper containing products, if you use preventatively, you can get good protection from the disease. Uh, although you will try all these in some situations, especially when the, uh, during the hot and humid summer, still you can get the disease. So uh, if you are not an organic grower, but conventional, there are some uh, chemical options or fungicidal options, especially those fungicides belonging to demethylation inhibitor, or we call, it, call them DMI, or sterile biosynthesis inhibitor, that is known as SBI fungicides. Some of the products known as uh, TILT, uh, Raleigh, Folicure, and Tebuconazole, those are good preventative products that you can use, but uh, just keep in mind that if you are using products from the same chemical group, there is a good sense that uh, over time, or if you use multiple times the same products, uh, they, the fungal pathogen can become resistant against those products. So it's always a good um, you know, stewardship of the, for the chemicals or to bring in a products from a different group. In, in this case, you can consider some of the products from strobularin group or quinone outside inhibitor group. Some of the products like azoxystrobin and triploxystrobin, you can rotate those products with DMI products. So uh, in any disease control, uh, especially when you are uh, using chemicals, it's always good to rotate products from different chemical groups so to minimize the uh, potential for resistance development.